Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode, we're gonna be taking a look at a Turinochylus murinus species tet from the tet region of Mozambique. Love this girl, picked her up several years ago and she's now pushing about four inches or so, has just molted and is in desperate need of a rehousing. Now, I posted pictures of this one up or a picture of this one up on Instagram a while back to show off how beautiful she is. Now, personally, I love the orangey OBTs. I love orange spiders, and the OBT has been a long been a favorite species of mine. However, I really like this one as well. And I've seen photos of other species of P. murinus out there or other regional variants of them, and they're all stunning. So that's definitely something I'll be looking forward to doing in the future, which is catching or grabbing up all the P. murinus species I can find. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at P. murinus species tech. Okay, so we're about to rehouse my Trinochylus murinus tet. It's a species from Tet Mozambique, a place where it is usually very, very hot and fairly dry overall. They don't get a lot of rain. So what we're setting it up on is first the enclosure is one of those millions of, I, I don't know which one this is. Hold on, I didn't even check. Primal cages enclosure. I got a bunch of these years ago. I don't think He's back open for business. He had to close up for a bit. Last I spoke, I'd reach out to him. I don't think I heard back from him, but there's a bunch of folks that make these now, probably like eight to 10. I don't know. It seems like there's always somebody else popping up making them, but I love these for the medium sized ones. This is a, a fairly decent sized spider, but this should give it enough room to kind of do what it needs to do. Now, the substrate in here is a mixture of peat, cocoa fiber, sand, and some shredded sphagnum moss. I have it mostly dry. You see it's a little bit moist on the bottom, only because when I mixed it up originally, it was moist. I had to hydrate the cocoa fiber, but I've been letting it dry in the garage for a couple months. So if it wants to dig down, get a little moisture, it can. Otherwise, the top is all dry, chalky, very nice stuff. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this one up, only because it's gonna, I'm going to do something a little bit different with it. This is a species... If you look at the container or the enclosure here, has done some webbing. And a lot of my P. murinus do like to web the snot out of their enclosure. So I'm going to give it some stuff to web too. So first off, what we're going to do is give it a hide. So we're going to give the old cork bark hide here. I'll make a space underneath it, which it'll probably bolt to and not allow us to get any shots. We're going to hope to get some shots of this one, but I'm not going to play around with it. And then I'm going to put a second one in here just because I like I've been doing this lately. It gives them a little choice. And then let's put some leaf litter down. Now, people sometimes ask why you put the leaf litter in. If you're doing a bioactive enclosure, it's to give it stuff to break down. For me, I just like the way it looks. It gives it a little more naturalistic appearance. Open that spot right up in there. And then I'm using dry New Zealand sphagnum moss because I don't need to use the green stuff because we're not really keeping this moist and we're going to go put some in there and then what we have here is we have a big grapevine in our backyard right curling around our porch and every year we have to trim it back and i saw people sell grapevine for inside of enclosures now if this was a moist enclosure i would not use a grapevine from what i've gathered it can get moldy and rot however this is going to be basically a dry enclosure so i think it'll work so what we're going to do is lay some of this in here so that it can web to it. I did this with, uh, I think he used sandblasted grapevine on a Harpac Tiroir enclosure. And unfortunately, it, they, they didn't work. <laughs> they did no webbing to it whatsoever. Now, break this one apart. And this is clean. We did not take the stuff that was on the bottom that my dog goes and pees on all the time. And I don't know if you can hear it, but in the back, my neighbors have spent the last several days cutting down a bunch of trees around their house. And now they've apparently rented an industrial strength wood chipper because everybody wants to hear that on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning. So hopefully it's not, uh, you can't hear it too, too much. It's driving me nuts. So I hate the sound of it. All right. So what we got here is hopefully a spot. Now, when we put the spider in, what I'm hoping it'll do is bolt down in there, be safe and sound, allow us to do a little talking after the fact. There will, I will give it a water dish. I have seen this one drink. And as a matter of fact, she molted recently. I'm saying she, I don't know the sex, but I was not able to pull the molt yet. But she had just molted. I hadn't fed her. I checked on her the other day and I realized that her water dish had evaporated. It was dry. So I poured some water in and she drank immediately. So keep in mind that although this is an arid species and there's a lot of talk about arid species not needing water, those are the ones I usually catch drinking the most. 
So what we're going to do, I will probably, uh, I really want to get a look at her. So what we'll probably do is pull some of this, we'll get the water dish out of here first and we'll pull some of this webbing out and put it in the old enclosure. I have been lately, and I've mentioned this in a couple other rehousing videos, been taking some of the old webbing out and putting it in the new enclosure because it seems to help them settle down more quickly. I found ones that'll just basically, they'll come in it's so cute, they'll lay down right on the old webbing because it must feel like home. And then when they start webbing up their enclosures, they take it from there. They start threading it out from there. So I think she is going to, let me just close this so she doesn't bolt out. Yeah, she's right in there. So what we're gonna do, I think she, it could be a male as far as I know. Uh, man, what did I set this one up as? I don't know if we recorded this one. It's got all kinds of weird stuff in it. Oh, there's the mold. Uh, do you see her? Because I don't... Oh, um, man, I really want to get her out, but I don't want to, obviously... Being a P. murinus, you don't want to mess with them too much. Well, first of all, we're going to grab this mold. And it's pretty chewed up. She's chewed up the last couple. I'll put it over there and see later on. I can figure it out. But hmm, hmm. Now let's get this stick out of here. And this will be nice, right in here. Oh, well, there we go. Now we're building a nice little cozy place. Oh, there she is, down the bottom. All right. So let me get this out of the way. And hopefully Billy can get some shots. I'll get the uh, flashlight out. Oh, okay. So I cheated with this one. There it is. I apparently just dropped. That's why we didn't film it because I was probably thinking she needed to be rehoused. I didn't feel like filming it and we just put it on here. So let me get this out of the way and let get Billy get some shots here. Hmm. Oh, there you go, dude. Now, what you should see, I have a picture I will flash up. I put one up on her, of her on Instagram a while back where she was a brilliant gold. And what you see there is some, you know, orangey, bronze, bronze ish, bronze -ish tones on her knees. And then the rest of her is kind of that gold color. Just a really good looking spot. I love all of that. I have to get more of them, but all the different regional variants of P. murinus are just as pretty as the OBT, which is the orange version. I have four that I bought that were supposed to be the no color form ones that I did not get what I paid for. They are orange OBTs, which I love them. Don't get me wrong. And my big female died recently. So it's I have plenty of replacements for her, but I really wanted the ones without any of the color. And as you can see here, she's this, this is what when people talk about P. murinus being crazy, this is pretty much what I've experienced with the vast majority of mine. I don't think I've ever received a threat posture from any of mine. And I've kept now nine, 10. So we're going to go ahead and try to get her into the new enclosure. There we go. I didn't really need the flashlight. So no, what I'm going to do is spread a little of this webbing. here. This should be a nice little home. We'll keep this out. All right. So do we go simply limeade? Do I go, I have the other, I don't have the, it looks like simply limeade because apparently I moved my other catch cup. Oh, there it is right there. This one might be the way to go. You know, for a split second there, I wasn't sure that cap was on. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was on. I just didn't know how if it had been. Unfortunately, we're not going to get a good shot. But what we're going to try to do is get her out onto the surface here. We put this here because people freak out when I don't cover it up. Move the light a little bit. And then we're going to do the trick where we... Drop the cardboard. Drop the cardboard. Every time. Oh, she's gripping it. Oh, all 
right. So what I'm going to do is, up, 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 up. Don't move. Do not want her out and about. Hmm. There it is, and that's fangs. Get that. Don't get too close. And that's only because she's startled. She's out in the open. When their fangs are out, that means they mean business. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set this on top so we can talk a bit about how to keep them. And Billy's going to get some more footage of her being a brat, but I don't blame her. I mean, think about it. She was buried. And if ever, what I want everybody to see in this is that she was completely buried in her home trying to avoid me at all costs. I pulled out the webbing. I pulled out everything on top of her. I poked her. I got her into a cup. I put her in the new enclosure. I poked her again. And finally, when she was caught out in the open, that's when she got a little ornery. And I don't blame her. That's a defensive pose. That's not aggressiveness. So there she is looking gorgeous. I wish I could trust her. Actually, she's probably in the threat pose. She'll probably sit there for a bit. But I'd really love to get some of that carapace in there. So this one I got. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There she goes. There she goes. Holy Moses. Well, this has been something I've waited to see for a long, long time. We did, I think, uh, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, when we rehoused my female, who was one of the most docile OBTs I've ever seen, when we had her in the catch cup, she did a little smacking at the catch cup. But again, they're, this is how they would defend themselves. As far as she's concerned, she's caught out in the open. She's in danger. So she's going to defend herself using what she has, which is those are those fangs. So this one picked up about two years ago as a little teeny tiny. It might have been three years ago. Actually, it might have been four years ago now I think of it. I think I got it from Arachnoid Den way back in the day. She's grown a little more slowly. However, what I found with P. Murinus is they are, they do come from a very warm region and uh, from warm regions where it's pretty hot and inhospitable and they do grow much more quickly with hotter temps. Now, do they do fine at lower temps? Yes. I raised my first OBT, the temperatures in the wintertime were in the 60s. In the summer, they were in the high 70s. Nowadays, here in the summertime, we're talking high 70s to mid 80s. In the wintertime, it's usually right around 72, 73 with a couple cool days. And they do just fine like that. Moisture-wise, you don't need to do too much with the moisture. You don't need, I won't keep part of this moist uh, like I do with some of my other species. You, a water dish will cut it. And if they do a lot of webbing, just putting some, let me just slide this over. There we go. If they do a lot of webbing, just putting some dribbling, some water on the webbing once or twice a week is also a nice way to give them a way to drink. Some of them will come right out and drink right from the webbing. Oh, she's so gorgeous. I want to take this off so you can get some shots of her. She's, see, look what she's doing now. She's like, I'm, I'm not being accosted. I'm going to hide. Great camouflage too. All right, don't get too, too close, but Billy's going to get some more shots of her. Gorgeous spider. It's got, I'm hoping it's a female. I've had, I've just had two OBT, the orange version males, and they were smaller than her. Oh my gosh, look at that. Stunning. So care wise, they're simple. As babies, they hit, they eat, they eat great. Uh, if you have one that's super tiny and you want to drop in something pre killed or a cricket drumstick, which is a cricket leg that you rip off, that shouldn't put it that way. If you grab the legs, the cricket will pop the leg off on its own. They'll feed off of that. As, as soon as they put on some size, those small crickets, small roaches, small mealworms are just fine. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that right on there. Um, as this one here the other day ate a large bee lateralis female roach. I'm, my females are getting old now and they're going to not make it through the winter. So unfortunately I am feeding some of them out, but she ate that with no problem whatsoever. I usually feed my older, my bigger tarantulas now about, let me change this a little bit so you can see something there. Oh, I'm just, I'm, oh, I didn't know if you were trying to get a better view. I usually feed my bigger ones. Nowadays it's every couple of weeks or sometimes once a month. Usually what happens is once they molt, like this one just molted, I pumped a couple meals to her in rapid succession. So she got like fed twice in a week. And once she put on a little size and didn't look quite so emaciated, then I will back off of it and probably feed her one big meal once a month. I'm going to try to get that cap out of there too. Look at her moving around. Let me see if just see if you can get some more shots of her. She's just so pretty.
Uh, Temperament-wise, as we spoke about before, this is an old-world tarantula. The P. murinus has a particularly bad reputation for being quite ornery. But as you saw earlier, if the, the, most of them would rather hide if given the space. The times I see ones that have super ornery ones are either messing with them or they have a situation where their enclosure is too shallow and the spider can't adequately hide. They web, you rip off the top, it rips the webbing off, you have a defensive spider. But I found that majority of mine, I have a bunch now that I need to rehouse. They're actually, I, I will say it flat out, I'll call myself out, too large for their enclosures. And I need to rehouse them very, very soon. And right now they are still not overly defensive. They will just go down, they've webbed up their entire enclosures and they go down and hide. And that's what this one did here. So there we go. P. Miranus Tet, or Tet Maz, I guess was the original thing it was sold as. Wonderful spider. Definitely looking. I'll probably drop a meal in later on to fatten her up a little bit more. And then we'll be putting the water dish in later, and then she'll be all set. But I'm, I'll do an update on her once she starts her webbing, which I'm assuming will start fairly soon. All right, so again, I know these guys have a terrible reputation, especially the fiery orange ones, but P. Murinus in general, people talk about how they're demons and how defensive they are. What you saw there is not aggressive behavior. That was defensive behavior. So she allowed me to pull up all the stuff on the top of her enclosure. She sat there all scrunched up as Billy filmed her. She was actually quite reasonable as I poked her in the behind with a brush and got her up into the catch cup. She was even reasonable when I got her out of the catch cup. It wasn't until she was out and exposed that you saw that threat posture go up. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the fangs were out at one point. That's a spider that's ready to bite. That's a spider that, for lack of a better term, is afraid for its own well-being, and it's going to use the last defense it has, which is to inflict a very painful bite on whoever is harassing it. So had we continued and stuck that brush back in there and poked her again, I can guarantee you that she would have turned around and struck at it, but I didn't want that. I wanted her to settle down. As you saw, as, as the video went on, she settled back down. Right now, she's up on the shelf, and she's basically scrunched up behind and underneath some of those grapevines and hopefully later on she'll settle down enough that she'll take a meal and start creating her new home. I'm expecting to see copious amounts of webbing in there. But that's always something to I like to point out because I think when we say something's aggressive, we take the onus away from the keeper and we say that there's no way to control that spider. And I don't find that to be the case. I find that when we say they're defensive, we recognize that they are responding to something that we are doing. And therefore, it's on us as the keeper to try to keep them calm. So are there going to be specimens out there that are just wild? Absolutely, there are. Somebody just contacted me recently and said they have a BM Amelia that attacks anything that goes inside the enclosure. Their temperaments may vary, and I say that every single time, temperaments may vary from spider to spider. But in the case of old worlds, I found the vast majority of them would just rather run and hide than stand and fight. And P. Murinus, from my experience with them, and I counted it up, I've actually raised 11 of them are the exact same way. Also, one of my shorts actually picked up a lot of steam. We picked up uh, quite a few subscribers for it. So if you're one of the new subscribers, I just want to say hello. Unfortunately, we're not one of the flashy channels out there. If you notice, I didn't poke this spider to get the rise out of it to get more views. It's not what we do. My channel is all about education, but I hope that some of you will stick with me and maybe some of you will actually wander into the field of keeping tarantulas. And if so, I think I'm a pretty good source of information. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in here. I'll put a couple more videos, maybe one featuring old worlds and OBTs over there. As always, if you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a few days. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.